Well, it's a great pleasure and honour to be with you for the EAO Digital Days focus sessions. I'm thrilled to be able to share this session with my good friend, Professor Alessandro Pozzi, and together we are really focusing on how the digital tools we have in our armamentarium today can help us to better manage our cases. In particular, he will focus on the uh, management of the various digital interfaces and how we utilize them. And my focus will be on the benefits of interdisciplinary uh, treatment management for complex cases in particular. So in the first slide, we see a patient who we treated uh, some years ago. And you can see that we have uh, localized periodontal issues. We have uh, clusal trauma due to restricted envelope of function and uh, fremitus of the teeth and the patient is bruxing and there is crowding as you can see. And without really an interdisciplinary approach, in the next slide we see the final result after uh, more than a decade in function. And you can see that we have a result which is really standing the test of time. In the next slide we see a case with a whole host of very complicated issues and a, and a severe case. We see the final result, again impossible to have done without an interdisciplinary approach. And this is now again more than a decade in function. We really see that even a single tooth case can present with some challenges. And here we have a patient with a long standing resin bonded bridge, which is no longer happy with. There's been loss of ridge volume, uh, generalized recession, some yellowing of the teeth, and some wear of the enamel. And the patient now wants to improve her smile. And again, we realize that to get the best result for our patient, we have to think in an interdisciplinary fashion. So we see that an interdisciplinary approach really brings together health function and aesthetics as our goals, but we have to examine the dental, the periodontal, the occlusal, and the aesthetic uh, parameters and issues in order to address this. And of course, our digital tools help us to do this quite well. We see the treatment planning really strategy that we have to have a systematic approach, controlling disease, modifying that foundation that we've got, which is healthy, into something that's going to help us, uh, rehabilitating the patient with a working prototype, a provisional restoration, of course, re-evaluating as we're going along before we make our final restoration, and then having a definite plan for a supportive therapy and, and maintenance, particularly of the cases which involve a history of periodontitis. In the next slide, we see the patient now, you know, at the planning stage, and we see CBCT and how these tools, our digital tools are so helpful, uh, particularly to evaluate uh, the ridge and uh, understand uh, better the bone anatomy and plan our treatment. And then you can see us taking the case through in the next slide to the uh, surgical and prosthetic um, restoration, uh, taking the patient through to the final result. And the next slide shows really the before and after comparison and the next slide shows the follow-up and how you can see how the quality of the soft tissue improves with time, particularly when we use connective tissue to graft. Uh, we see this as a common uh, outcome. We understand that when we're faced in, in, in our compromised uh, dentition in contemporary rehabilitations today, the dilemmas that we face are number one, compromised structure, number two, compromised soft tissue aesthetics, and number three, patients who are periodontally compromised. And of course, in order to manage all these things appropriately, we have to think with our interdisciplinary uh, hat on and manage the cases from a point of view is what can dentistry do best for this patient rather than just what does my speciality or my favorite uh, aspect of dentistry. You know, it's not just about implants, it's also about encompassing everything we have in our armamentarium for the benefit of the patients and the long-term outcome. So in the next slide, we can see a patient who presents very typical of some of the real challenges that we see today, patients who have had failed implants or failed grafting. And if we look in the next slide, we see the patient uh, as uh, these slides were present, uh, provided to me by the referring dentist and shows the uh, initial situation where the patient had lost a, a bridge abutment uh, from uh, in the anterior maxilla. And the dental team, uh, previous dental team, had grafted the patient, uh, first a GBR um, or combined GBR and, uh, and block graft. And, uh, and this failed and we can see perhaps if we look at the flap management, the soft tissue management, it's not really ideal. Uh, the flap looks to be under too much tension and uh, these slides were provided by the referring dentist and the patient was actually referred to another specialist who did a second graft and that also failed 
and we see the outcome of the failed graft and the, the, uh, the graft actually sequestering through the tissue. And in the next slide, the patient was, has, uh, I uh, saw the patient for the first time. So she was referred to me with this very significant defect and very compromised soft tissue uh, and ridge area in the anterior maxilla. And the patient wants to have individual teeth. She wants to have uh, a solution uh, for this situation and she would prefer to avoid prosthetic gingiva uh, and wants to have her gum and bone rebuilt. This presents us a great challenge. What am I going to do? We see some of our thinking and we're thinking about how we can utilize orthodontics to benefit us in this case. We can move the canine into the position on the lateral incisor, reduce the size of the defect, bring healthy bone and, and the papilla and the interposital bone peak into that area that will help us then to have a smaller defect, which is a single tooth defect, with two bone peaks on the adjacent teeth, which will give us a much more predictable outcome in terms of augmentation and, and rebuilding of the ridge. In the next slide, you see the process of treating the patient, orthodontics, uh, and provisionalizing first of all, uh, then moving teeth across, and you see how we basically move the canine into the position of the lateral incisor. We carry out some root plasty and, and modification to the tooth to make it narrower, we see uh, the outcome after the orthodontic treatment. Now we're ready to place an implant distal to the canine, which is now in the lateral position, and we're ready to augment the ridge in the central. Next slide shows the next stage, augmentation of the bone, plus a connective tissue augmentation and tissue augmentation to increase the volume of keratinized tissue and, and create a, a better uh, site for us. Uh, and an implant placed behind the moved canine. We see the uh, case as it's uh, now ready for restoration and we're now ready to place the implant in the central incisor. Now having placed the implant, further augmentation carried out and we see the pace, uh, case progressing and uh, going to prosthetic phase. Next slide shows the follow-up, some crown lengthening on the contralateral side to harmonize the gingival margins and provisionalization and then allowing the uh, working prototype or provisional to mature and stabilize. You see the tissue maturation, and now we're ready to finalize the case. In the next slide, we see the final result compared to the starting position, and you can see, whilst it's not a perfect outcome, we see a, a very significant improvement, particularly in the bone and soft tissue volumes in the area, uh, and a completely different sort of scenario for that patient, and a, quite a nice symmetrical outcome. We see the case going through and you can see the comparison and what's exactly happened with the radiographs and the clinical slides and in the next slide we see the final outcome again the close-up view of the maxilla and the final OPG. The next case we see a, a lady who's got a very compromised dentition and again wants to have a, a, an optimum aesthetic outcome. We can see the close-up view of the, uh, of the uh, patient uh, with a frontal view of the teeth, uh, very deep bite, very compromised teeth, lost a lot of teeth, ridges that are resorbed, all sorts of problems here. We see the radiographic picture, um, a loss of already a significant number of teeth in the maxilla and mandible, and we have in the upper left maxilla uh, uh, already a shrunken ridge, and we have a further complication that we have a, a, a failed uh, lateral incisor which is carious, the root needs to be extracted, and the canine, as you can see from the CBCT slice, uh, has uh, internal and external resorption and is also failing. So, and this is a, 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 a real problem because we have the canine supporting that uh, alveolus in that area. And if we lose that and lose the lateral, we're going to have a massive defect, which is going to be very difficult to, uh, to manage. So, of course, the next slide shows that we have to really think about how to manage this. We provisionalize the case using the teeth. We can keep the canine as, uh, for the short term uh, while we place a few implants to help us. We do some uh, sinus grafting and uh, augmentation on the ridge. We see the, the approach used for the anterior teeth. And this is a partial extraction therapy approach with a socket shield approach, placing an implant in the lateral incisor and implants distal. You can see uh, where the implants are placed in the posterior maxilla and the provisional restoration also maintained there. And how we use a, a provisional on the healing abutment supported by some teeth. Canine now being treated with partial extraction therapy. We're fortunate that the resorption was on the palatal aspect, so we would keep the labial socket shield, and we're placing implants there. 
the case progressing to provisionalization and the case at its final outcome. And you can see how very nicely we've been able to restore the uh, anterior teeth with the very symmetrical anterior uh, maxilla, the papillae, all present, and uh, a really very acceptable outcome given the challenges of the case. In the next slide, we can see uh, the before and after comparison, improvement in the bite, obviously having to do restorative therapy, orthodontics, uh, and all the uh, associated um, soft and hard tissue management with implant therapy as well. We see the close-up view at a five-year follow-up showing a very stable result and an excellent outcome for this patient. In the next slide, we really then move on from compromised structure um, and compromised soft tissue aesthetics to the periodontally compromised patient, which is a, a great challenge. And how we can take scenarios like this and transform them. We see the uh, literature review of the uh, implants in periodontal patients. So we know that the literature tells us that we should expect to see a higher level of biologic complications, perhaps more periimplantitis, more mucositis, and certainly these patients need very, very meticulous supportive care and maintenance therapy. We see the cases that we're going to look at with the before and the after result, which we published some years ago. And in the next slide, we see the first case at presentation. So this patient was a 50-year-old lady uh, with uh, uh, neglected her teeth and the teeth have splayed. She has advanced periodontitis. The teeth have migrated and splayed, so everything is in the wrong place. A little bit more detail, uh, occlusal views and, and the structure of the teeth, and we can see things are very compromised. A close-up view of the radiographs, and we can see that we're really dealing with some minimal amounts of bone left on these anterior teeth, and we're going to try and utilize these teeth to bring the bone and soft tissues down uh, using uh, orthodontics therapy. We look at the traditional approaches. Our strategies are to preserve, immediate bracement, reconstruct, or prosthetically replace uh, teeth. And of course, in this case, many of us would accept that we just extract all the teeth and, and go for a conventional all on four or six type approach with uh, a prosthetic gingiva. And that would be very acceptable. But are there other approaches that we could utilize maybe to improve the maintenance possibilities for the patient? and orthodontic regeneration is the full strategy that we like to employ. So in the next slide, we see, again, that st uh, strategic, um, systematic approach to our treatment planning. And in the next slide, the approach utilized in this particular concept, where we stabilize the disease, extrude the failing teeth, providing uh, sites for immediate implant placement, and then be able to restore the patient with fixed crowns and bridges. The case now, uh, after initial therapy, and then in the next slide, the orthodontic treatment, in this case, lingual, which is more difficult. I would recommend labial brackets uh, for this because the vector of extrusion is difficult to control with lingual appliances. Okay, so we're gonna bring the bone and the soft tissue down and also close the diastomers and bring the teeth back to where they should be so that our extraction sites are in the correct position. We see uh, the patient at uh, placement of the implants immediate provisionalization, utilizing one implant and a tooth for retention, and resting the bridge with the pontics on the healing abutments. Uh, we also carried out some soft tissue grafting and, 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 and so on in the usual way, uh, grafting the sockets with some biomaterial in the gap and uh, connective tissue on the facial aspects to improve the outcomes and reduce the remodeling. We see the case at final completion. We can see the comparison of the case at uh, eight years and we see how the patient is very stable and you can see really the, the significant improvement radiographically in the amount of bone uh, volume that was uh, produced. We see the 11 year follow up compared to the starting point showing a very very stable outcome and in the next slide we see the close up view uh, again very acceptable outcome in a very challenging case. And where we have normal clinical crown lens and patient can maintain this with conventional brushing and flossing uh, without the complications of trying to manage a uh, large prosthesis with prosthetic gingiva. Uh, second case, which is a 38-year-old patient with a, an aggressive periodontitis, and we can see here very uh, extensive bone loss around the teeth and really problematic with an asymmetrical bone loss in the anterior maxilla and all sorts of problems. She wanted to have single teeth, and uh, this presents quite a challenge, as you can see. Of course, we could extract the teeth and go for prosthetic gingiva, but is there another possibility? We consider what our treatment options might be to try and create an, uh, uh, an okay result. Of course, we could extract and carry out 
uh, significant bone augmentation with uh, with the morbidity associated with that and this uh, this I'm sure we would get an acceptable result but are there ways to be more controllable uh, and less invasive in the next slide we see the patient after initial therapy extracting what we considered were hopeless teeth uh, bear in mind that today perhaps we would keep more teeth than we did in this case but nevertheless I think the, the treatment was very successful we see the patient uh, during orthodontics extruding the teeth very slowly uh, with light forces again in this case lingual but we would recommend normal conventional labial brackets it's much easier to control and uh, a minimum retention period of three months for these cases to allow the bone extruded bone and soft tissues to uh, stabilize and mature in the next slide we see how we utilize magnets in the pontic and the roots to further extrude the roots beyond what the uh, brackets could manage and we see that the roots are really extruded in, a, in an unusual way, almost have a reverse topography in the bone in the anterior maxilla between the incisors, as you can see. Immediate implants were placed. In the next slide, we see the case uh, implants placed. Uh, even the sockets are very small. Uh, some biomaterial might be used in this gap and connective tissue added to uh, augment soft tissues. Prosthetic management going through to the final restoration and we see the final restoration being placed and the initial radiographs. Of course, in, in this case, cement retained. Uh, to be fair, today probably we would do everything with screw retained restorations as that's uh, the trend and, uh, uh, and the way that we generally do things today. Um, but nevertheless, this can work very well, but you see the careful use of a retraction cord to control cement excess, which is very, very important. We see the case uh, finished and uh, uh, individual teeth as the patient requested. Uh, before and after comparison and then in the next slide we see the case as it started out reminder of the severity of the problem the final result this is a five-year follow-up showing a very nice stable outcome the eight-year result showing again a very stable outcome in fact interesting to note that we have some recession now on the teeth but not on the implants the implants are very stable and the bone uh, topography between the two central incisors, for example, which was kind of reversed initially, now we can see that kind of mineralizing in, that the bone seems to be growing down into the area between, uh, into the papilla area, which is fascinating. However, it's a periodontally compromised case, and if we look in the next slide, we can see that we have an area where we have a periimplantitis now and some bone loss around one of the implants in the mandible. This was treated surgically with uh, uh, open flap debridement and, and grafting um, and in the next slide we can see uh, a year later uh, a complete resolution of the defect and uh, a, a nice healthy outcome and then in the final slide we see the 11 year follow-up showing very very good uh, outcome maintained uh, soft tissue health interesting to see the lateral incisor you see the thickening of the soft tissue where one of the connective tissue grafts uh, this sometimes happens with these connective tissue grafts but uh, a very acceptable result. Uh, just uh, to say a thank you, uh, it's been an honor to be part of this session, and I hope that I've been able to share uh, in a very whirlwind lecture, uh, whirlwind lecture, uh, the um, benefits of an interdisciplinary concept in the management of our cases. Thank you, and uh, I hope you have a great EAO Digital Days focus sessions.